Bananas maketh man. Do you know what that means? Then let me teach you a lesson. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. This is your host Faisal Rahman. Welcome you all to the Minimalistic Muslim Podcast, episode three. And uh, with me is joining uh, Iman. So your co-host Iman. With me is joining. I didn't even say that right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Iman, how are you doing, darling? Um, alhamdulillah, I'm doing very well. How's your week been? Been very good. Been very busy. What have you been up to? Lately, I've been reading a lot of books. I realised that. Books. Yeah, mum's been buying some books lately. A lot okay. of Michael Morpogo books, and I've just been going through those. Fantastic. Any idea what we're talking about today? So we're going to talk about manners and etiquettes. Okay, I think uh, that little track in the beginning of the episode <laughs> gave it away. That's right. We are going to be talking about manners and etiquettes. And uh, did you remember that scene in that movie, Kingsman? Yeah. Colin Firth, I think his name is. Yeah. So that was the introduction of how he introduces and when i heard that manners maketh man i was like that's quite interesting quite old school but quite interesting yeah. um and uh, it got me thinking um looking at uh, our current society and just how people have kind of changed over the years mm -hmm. whether for the good the bad or the ugly but it's just to see whether do we yeah. really understand yeah, do you, like you know those manners and etiquettes of of how people were that's what we're going to kind of look into today right the reason I think um, I wanted to speak about this is because over the years, mm -hmm. I just see that manners of generally everybody seems to have decreased. decreased. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was a little kid, you know, you'd, you'd go and speak to no matter who it was, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd make, you know, people would make sure that they would give you the time, um, the nod, the highs, the thank yous please but you don't get to see that anymore what's wrong with the world i'm only joking i mean uh, <laughs> <laughs> no i mean in in a funny way it is it is quite a serious topic yeah I guess. um mm. you know something personally i mean i remember growing up you know i was just alluding to that funny little thing that we just did um but people really did spend you know take out time for one another no matter what the situation was, you know, you'd always, you'd always see people making an effort um, and how they generally were with one another. You'd, you'd see a lot more respect that you do, that you see nowadays. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, you know, it's, for me, it's, I don't know, like, this is what I want to talk about as to why, you know, when, when, what's happened in the last decade or so to, to see that people really don't give a monkey's no more about, uh, anyone and it's just become you know a self a self Selfie. thing yeah it's just every oh yeah <laughs> it's all about the self and the selfies that's right um for me you know the reason i say it's a personal focus for me because i remember growing up and it was quite instilled in me as a young at a young age just you know with me and my sisters that this was how you behaved yeah. you know this is how you behaved with no matter who they were you know your 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 caste your creed your religion made no difference whatsoever but this is this is how you behaved when you were out of the home um when you went to school the next in in line was the teachers and they were able to say you know however it was in terms of discipline yeah but now it, it, it's it's like and I, I you know i i truly believe those values were very important and you just see them that nowadays that people people shy away from that um and uh, it seems like there is a a huge problem in uh, in looking at where people's manners are yeah you know when we think of manners generally we think of the english people gentle yeah like you know it's it's almost just like that tea party you know yeah. you'll see with it oh you know <laughs> do pass over the salt <laughs> you know it's 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 a way in which we don't see it other than you know i don't know about yourself but it's it's pretty much ingrained in the British culture where oh this is how the British were. Yeah. You know there's a there's a a word that's no longer used. It's called comportment. Right. Don't know if you've heard that before. And uh, back in uh, back in the days, 
years ago. Right. This was something that kids in school, and when I say kids in school, I'm talking like two generations ago. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah. um, but they would be graded on that. And what that basically means is how you carry yourself. So how you okay. are as a person, how you're carrying yourself. Yeah. And there was a grade given, like how well you carried yourself. You can just imagine if that was today, yeah. you know, what, what would be the marks? You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of things have changed. Um, you, you often hear people say that uh, I'm only speaking the truth, you know, and I'm only saying it as it is. Mm. Um, and I just find that, yeah, people used to do that back in the days, but they always used to be a bit more courteous in terms of how the other person is feeling. Yeah, think about the others. And, uh, you know, like how we say there's a time and there's a place. Yeah. And now you just feel, well, I just feel that. Everyone's blunt now. Yeah. And, just, and, 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 but that's, it's like, it's, it's expected. It's like, you should be blunt. There's nothing wrong with being blunt. Okay. Mm. But it's like, well, since when have we not started to care about each other's feelings? I'm not saying, you know, there's a difference in saying, saying what needs to be said. Then there's a manner in which something needs to be said. And I yeah. think that's what's lacking. Everyone just thinks, just got to say it, just got to say it. Whether it's like, it's almost like that education. They don't know, like, yeah, you, you need to say it, but just look at your circumstances and say, all right, make a note, make a mental note and say, all right, I need to address this later. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel, you know, I, I hear too often that, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's probably best just to say it as it is and all this. And I think, no, you need to work on yourself and be able to know how and when to speak to people. Mm. That respect yeah. You know, it governs a society in a way that, you know, you are a product of your society and you see that if people as individuals don't hold those values, then as a society, we kind of, that's, that's dictating what kind of people we are and what kind of society we've created for ourselves. You know, it's just like we don't give any consideration to other people. Being rude, being ignorant is cool. All right. Mm. So it's like, well, when did that happen? But that's, that's the whole purpose of, of looking at this and thinking, well, is it old fashioned? Is having good manners old fashioned or, or is it that, you know, it needs to be revived? Yeah. And you know what? The reason I use the word revived is because I say it's a forgotten sunnah as well. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people and I say this respectfully that, uh, they can, they, they, you know, they're more concerned on the outer of appearance on how they're looking yet their inner being, they could be the most rudest people. Mm. You know, as soon as they open their mouth, they're like, well, what, what did they just say? And you're, you're finding that a lot. And look, this new breed of people where it's all about the, I mean, again, I don't know. It's, it's like this self-consciousness. They, they no longer think about themselves, their actions, how they're making people behave. And it's all about, um, and it's all about just saying it as it is, no matter what the consequence is. And I don't think that's, that was even in our tradition, right? Mm -hmm. um, so like, like uh, there's a statement that says, we listen with the intent to reply. So that's another thing. So for example, when, when someone's having a conversation with you, yeah. we no longer listen to really understand what that problem is. We're almost just like, no, we've got to say something. We've got to say something. So it's just like, just always having the upper hand on any conversations as well. All right. So... And it's, it's, it's things like that, which I think are distant, distancing themselves from other people. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, as I said, it's like, it's, um, just that detachment from people that you see. Right. Right. Would you be surprised to say that, you know, I came across an article and it said about 90% of Brits yeah. agree that people are becoming more rude. Well, I'm not surprised by it because you can kind of actually see it. It's, okay. It's I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know in terms of how many people they interviewed for this. That's true. All right. But that is, no matter what the case, that's showing yeah. a reflection of your society to say that a lot of people think that British people, oh, no, not British no. people, sorry, yeah. that a lot of. Um, yeah, because like if you compare, if you're comparing the old times to now, then yeah, there's going to be a very big difference. Like how they were, how they acted, like how you're saying with the dinner parties and stuff. Yeah. Now it's just, you know. You can still have your partying, but it's different now. But so the the dinner parties are more to do with the etiquettes thing. So why don't you explain to us the difference between manners and etiquettes? Okay, okay yeah. So basically, when we first like, you know, when we use uh, manners and etiquettes, 
usually we use them like we don't uh, like with me i'm not going to speak for everyone mm -hmm. but with me it's just like i use them but i don't actually really know the meaning i just know it's silly with behavior but when like yesterday however we we're talking about it it yeah. actually is more it's, it's a deeper meaning yeah. there's a reason why there's two words and not one mm -hmm. and basically what i found is etiquettes and manners so etiquettes is basically how like in different countries that and you behave in certain circumstances so both both manners and etiquettes come under behavior and etiquette is more to do with behavior so like they're um in different surroundings in your circumstances you'll mm -hmm. behave differently manners is just you like your personality how you talk to people how you are and like your pleases and your thank yous okay. and stuff and basically another reason um an example i think would be easier is like mm -hmm. let's say you're just in a random country and you're doing something that isn't allowed in that country okay right? and you don't know about it it's that that's the country's etiquette so let's say um you have a book and you're not allowed in that country you're not allowed to read that certain book it mm -hmm. could be you know offensive to them mm -hmm. so that would be that that's not that's not what we do here okay that's not our etiquette okay um and manners would be if you say no to that person no i want to read that book mm -hmm. or yes i will then that's your good manners or your bad manners how you you know how you um reply to that mm -hmm. and um, uh, yeah i'm, I'm remember, sorry to cut you off there but I remember we were having this conversation yesterday because when we spoke about it, we were like a bit confused because like, are they the same thing? Yeah, or the <laughs> you know, or and I remember you telling hard, me that yeah, it's hard to differentiate. Yeah, yeah, but like what you said, manners is more inwardly. Yeah, how you behave with other people. Yeah, and etiquette is more an outwardly thing of how you behave in a given situation. Yeah, um, and where you know it can be quite easily you can think that both are the same, same thing. thing. Yeah, but manners are something which um they shouldn't change with time yeah right? etiquettes so change with time etiquettes change with time and right? different countries okay. okay so like with manners you you know it's like they will always be you know it's not like the, the for like example thank the like thank yous now. and the goodbyes yeah. yeah or the pleases that's always going to be there and that yeah. just comes under good manners and the etiquettes change over time as we said like in victorian yeah. england how they would behave yeah. would be different to how it is today yeah so the question is that okay because you can't have such a thing as bad etiquette okay yeah. is it bad etiquette no there's no such thing as bad or good because that's how you that's your um like that's your surroundings that's mm -hmm. what you've been brought up and that's your etiquette so you know and nothing other if you're not obviously right around those kind of people who do opposite things to you you'll think that they have bad etiquettes but that's actually not something that's not your etiquette it's not something to call bad right okay there's something as good manners and bad manners. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's different that's, that's what you usually hear yeah you know. but not not etiquettes okay okay so like uh, when i was saying about earlier this article that's what I no 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 that's fine that's that, 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 i think i agree with you um like what i was saying earlier with the uh, the stat of 90 percent of brits agree that people are becoming more rude the reasons or the things that they were giving were things like cue pushing mm. are they finding a lot more people cue pushing <laughs> um not saying pleases and thank you yeah uh, people not covering their mouths when they cough and sneeze. I don't know if you've experienced that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, again, it's a general how you, that word, comportment, comportment, how you carry yourself in public. Yeah. You know, how, and, and, and it's not to be seen to be doing something like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm in the same area. It's like, this is who you are. This is your general makeup of, of how you, you behave uh, and make others behave. And, and um, we're going to come to how, I think uh, this all starts from and stems from. But um, another interesting fact is that because we're so rubbish with our manners, mm -hmm. we've got artificial intelligence such as Alexa, I believe, okay. um, that now wants you to say please and thank you when you give it commands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true. Robots are telling you what to do yeah, now. Yeah, but, no, but look, look at the irony. Yeah, they're, they're now rude. they're now trying to tell yeah, you like, that you are rude and you now need to start to step up and be, you know like remember to be saying your pleases and thank yous yeah. um and it just shows where we've kind of fallen mm. with our manners like before and back in the days this was this would be unheard of it would be you know there, there used to be a saying like mind your manners <laughs> okay like yeah behave kind of a thing like watch yourself yeah right but nowadays it just seems like like i was saying you could do what you want act how you want say what you want no consequences no you know and it's just expected so as a society sorry as individuals if we hold those then it's as a society it shows you what kind of people we're becoming 
Mm. That's what I was kind of saying earlier. Maybe we should be more like the Danish. The Danish? Yeah. Okay. All right. Apparently. Mm. They're the most polite country, I'm going No, no, no. They're not the most polite. I think the, mo- the most polite is Japan. Japan, okay. Okay, but um, the reason is that, again, they're saying they're happy people. <laughs> all right? And they generally look after their people. Right. And the stats are 43% of Danish people. Yeah. Volunteer, right, right, and they're saying that these are one; these are the steps of how people can be a bit more empathetic to others. That they like take time from themselves, yeah, from their families. They'll go and visit the hospitals, and they'll give their time, whether it's charities, to understand and be grateful for what they have. Hmm. Very similar to what you do, right? Do you remember you used to go to yeah. the, the cafe with you? Cafe. All right, so you and your brother and sister would go to the cafe and give yeah. it your time. And you would just go and help. And Why is it that you would do? So basically, the cafe, I, I'm home educated, right? So the cafe would be on the Wednesdays. <laughs> so it would be inside the hall. And um, basically, what would happen is that um, there was like a lot of elderly there. There was like a, a lot of old people there. And what we would do is we'd either like go or take orders for them. Or we would just, you know, just chat with them. Just have, you know, just try to, you know, bond with them because a lot of them uh, uh, like the sons or daughters if they even had children mm-hmm. they would they're all gone like they're all doing their own life and they're not really communicating with their parents anymore so then you kind of do sympathize for those kind of people um so what our job was either like you know taking the orders or just being for them and just chilling around and just listening to what they have to say and it's quite interesting actually okay okay but th- there you go look you went there and you, it's, it's kind of giving you some growth and yeah. understanding that there are other people. You see people, whether they're in, in their disabilities or they're less fortunate. But when you go, there, it's quite a humbling experience it when is. you're helping out and just giving it. You know, you know, you're there because you want to be there. Mm. All right. And and when you're doing things to serve others, that satisfaction, that humbleness. Yeah, you don't that, get from anything else. That also nurtures your personality. So as a human being, you grow up to appreciate those things because you you're you're you know what you have, and you're also giving back into your community. But yeah. as a community, the more people do this, the more tolerance we have towards each other, yeah. the more understanding we, we create for one another, the more love we have for, for one another. Um, and as a society, again, we bring in things like the, the manners and you know, appreciating um, yeah. how we behave with other people. Um, okay, so um, what I thought would be quite interesting... Right. I think you're going to enjoy this. Hmm. So I'm going to do a little quiz with you. And basically what this quiz is, is it says, which country fits your manners? All right. So I think they've only, it's a random, I think they've only picked like 14 countries. I don't know why, but I think it would have been too long. But just to give an indication, like where you, where you, where your manners would fit. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Okay, go on. Be as honest as you can. Yep. And then we can work out in terms of where, where, which country (laughs) fits your manners. Okay. All right. So uh, what do we have? All right, so question number one. Go. When you're eating in a restaurant, do you leave a tip? Yes. Now, hold on. (laughs) (laughs) No question about that. No, no, no. There's multiple choice. So you've got some, you've got, you've got, you've got some reasons as to why. Okay. So you're quite generous. You just give a tip straight away. Yeah. Um, So your choices are always, Uh only if the level of service is impressive. Okay. Or never. Okay. Maybe the second one. Okay. If so, it's really rubbish, then probably not. Okay. But. <laughs> All right. So basically, this is only in the service, only in the level of service, uh, only if the level of service is impressive. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we go down that one, and it says, "Next question for you is how much personal space do you need?" So okay. that your choices are hold me or back off. Only two. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be pie in the middle. Wait. Personal space. Mm-hmm. Do you like people around you? Do you like? It people depends at a on my. It's, it depends on. Well, you don't. There's no depends. You, you, uh, you got to be like. Okay. Where do you naturally gravitate towards? Okay, I like to be around people, but I don't think it would be like a hold me. I like too much people. Okay. So I just go for that one because I don't really like to be on my own anyway. So which one are we going for? The first one. Hold me or back off. Hold me. <laughs> hold me. Because <laughs> I don't think I say back off. Okay. So you don't. So basically, saying you, you know, how much personal space do you need? You're quite happy not having any. You want to be comforted. I yep. guess it would say. The thing is that, I'd, yeah, I'd be. You, in the it's middle. your choice. In real life, I'd be in the All right. Okay. So you're. So basically, it's saying, 
that you on the three questions yeah well it's told me from those three questions where you're best suited you're best suited in either brazil wow okay cool or spain i'm not i actually got like this okay. country <laughs> so brazil or spain why does it say why uh no it's just it's just a, an interesting flow chart i mean to, just to go back a bit because what i thought was quite interesting was it, when it says do you leave a tip in a restaurant and if you said never mm. okay which you would have thought is quite rude quite yeah. let's say even you had an amazing service at the restaurant you would never leave a tip okay yeah the people who would never leave a tip would be coming from japan and you said that was the most polite country most polite country <laughs> Okay, why? This is my theory. Right, go. As I said that when you when you read about Japan. Yeah. As you said, they're very polite. Yeah. The standard Mm -hmm. of customs and the standard of looking after you is so high naturally. Not that they have to achieve it, that they have set their standard of how they deal with you or how Mm -hmm. they treat you so high that it's unexpected that you're going to go into a restaurant and you're going to have a really bad service right so the expectation is set so high that you would never need to leave a tip oh so not that because it's rude i mean so i could be completely wrong yeah <laughs> but i'm I, I i'm thinking more like from someone from here thinking you know it, it could be one of these things like you know um you know remember that thing you were telling me about china that if you do something that there yeah and we do the same thing here it's considered disrespectful yeah it so it could it could eating. be it could be something similar to that yeah. whereas you're giving them money and they're thinking they, they find that disrespectful because they'd be thinking no no you don't think we get <laughs> we get wages thank yeah. you very much we don't need that do you see yeah. that could be a situation that could be it or that they've set the bar so high the standard so high that even giving a tip is just like pff, hmm. doesn't you know it's just like doesn't no 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 it. you know it's just oh. that they've hit that top tier of just service all right and okay. politeness and all of that so um for them just being polite was probably <laughs> more rewarding i guess oh well. but like i said i could be tem- completely completely wrong I mean, in this very nice of them so um but as you as we said the world's most politest country is japan what do you think about that well i don't know actually i don't know what to think of that i never really thought of japan because thing is I didn't, I didn't really think of Japan as a... I mean, I knew it was a polite country, but I wouldn't think Japan would be the most <laughs> polite country. Okay. I, I don't know. I never really thought about it. Just... All right. Well, there you go. You've learned something new. Yeah, I guess so. Um, coming back to how we started with that little segment, man is maketh man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I like that movie. Okay. Well, th- the thing is... That character in that movie was quite inspiring. Yeah, the guy who said it. Like, yeah, the guy who said it. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, because it's like he as, and this is what I'm saying as a character, as a person, right? right. He was dignified as an individual, mm-hmm. well mannered. Yeah. But also knew to how to stand his ground. Okay, yeah. so sometimes we think, oh, you know, being like that comes across as being arrogant, but there's a difference which we'll come to. But it's like your your. You know your, um, how can I say it? Like, you know yourself. Right. Right. And like I said, the politeness and the mannerisms is who you are. Mm-hmm. But then you are able to know how to move in society without being disrespectful, but hold your ground. So even though, like, sometimes in the movie he gets laughed at because he speaks a funny way or he behaves a certain way. Yeah. Right. And the kid's like, what's this all about? Yeah. yeah. But he holds himself with dignity yeah all right and that to the fact that even the main character mm. is so inspired by him that he actually he starts becomes, to becomes yeah. him all right and uh, that's that's the thing which i enjoyed and it's just like that that kind of thing is an attraction mm. when someone is polite towards you it's almost like you feel attracted to that yeah, yeah. you feel closer like oh okay this person's you know i want this person near me kind of a thing yeah. um, and the more when you find people who are disrespectful horrible mm. narcissistic think about themselves you want them at like arm's length kind of a thing yeah, yeah? so uh that's what that's what i thought um and that's what i think so that's that's the kind of thing when i look at manners i kind of see it as a personal thing 
Yeah. I see myself like that, that kind of a guy where you're, where you're, what are you laughing for? <laughs> no. I'm not saying I am that guy. Yeah. What I'm saying is that you hold yourself in dignified. Yeah. You're dignified oh, yeah. in the way you carry yourself. Mm-hmm. Yet you are well mannered, but you know, you know how to hold your ground. You know how to hold your ground. All right. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's like, if trouble comes your way, you don't go out looking for trouble, basically. Yeah. And nowadays, I think people go around looking for trouble. Yeah. All right. But that's that's with the difference. So you, you're, you're there, but you're prepared for if trouble comes your way. All right. Yeah. And whether you whether it's any form of martial arts or it's something that you have that you're like, you know what? I'm not going around looking for it. But if, I, but if it does come my way, I'm prepared. But the first, the first point of contact is obviously you, how you conduct yourself and you make sure you conduct yourself well. Mm. So it's things like that, which I think is lacking in society. I think people are often very quick to jump and just get into something mm. as opposed to, you know, think about, hold on, what am I about to do here? Right. Yeah. Um, now, what I wanted to do is just for this ne- next segment is just to kind of give your own personal experience of how you think, like, because before you were home educated, when you went to your school, yeah um you've you've gone through different schools yeah and you probably yeah right wow okay <laughs> so you've probably seen well i don't know you may have seen different behaviors in different places mm, yeah. so i just want to see whether you've experienced what you've experienced growing up here and whether you encountered what you would say is bad manners and you're thinking why are people acting this way or whether you just thought this is how it is or whether you never thought anything of it so basically so i went to the four schools in my first school i really enjoyed just everyone was so polite i think at my when i was a kid mm-hmm. i think we still had those manners okay i don't think i was too far off of now obviously now high school is like the same for everyone now everyone's like that not everyone i'm not saying that but basically back then i just remember everyone was just so nice and there was not obviously you did have your bullying but it wasn't that you know aggressive or bad and stuff so i, I remember during my first school and i really liked that one mm-hmm. and then so i went through my other schools my other schools were all right and I was some of them were like I did experience like the bad manners. Okay. And what I would say is like, for example, a lot of the times, especially, I don't know if this is just, I don't, I don't really know why, but most of the time it was the boys who would be very much, you know, they, the teacher would be talking mm-hmm. or they're doing the lesson and they would always interrupt. They always do something and then distract themselves. They get the teacher upset and they get the teacher angry. Then everyone else has to face the consequences that, that I really did not like. It was like someone made like one of the boys did something wrong or they mess something up, or they were just annoying someone else, right. and now everyone has to pay for that. I okay. didn't. I okay. just didn't. Like and I used to get that. So basically, if you had one bad uh, student, yeah, the, just the every- teacher would say, "Listen, whoever it is, sort it out. Otherwise, you're all in." That yeah, kind of, okay. and they and they would never own up to it. So everyone always got it, you know. But um, what happened is that, like another thing as well, with my school, they didn't really do much about it. So it just kept growing. And I remember my friend, she was there from day one since, mm. was, since nursery. Mm-hmm. And I just started. Um, and what happened is that she was saying that since all my years in the school, it's, it was all right at the beginning, but then because they didn't do anything about the manners, mm-hmm. it just got worse. It's just got worse. And okay. now everyone was just making, taking the mick mm-hmm. and the teachers can't do anything about it. The head teacher can do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And so it was just got worse. And you know, it just no one was it, the manners is like because i don't know if i was about like i don't know if i didn't have manners and that's why they acted the way they did i don't know if everyone in my class it, i don't even know if i had good manners at the time but mm. when i saw them i just saw that they were very i didn't really like to be around them mm-hmm. um but yeah and then if you were and another thing that would upset me is if you were good mm. if you did have good manners you would be criticized for that you'd be like really oh, or you're a pushy whatever or you're so good mm-hmm. and then you would be forced to be a bit on the bad side because you would be picked on if you weren't okay i don't know if that's with ev- all the schools but there are some of them that i went to they were like that um but yeah it's just i can't really say much about it but my the bad manners there was a bit too much especially because we were only you know who's still young as well mm. and like those people now how where they are now we i don't know mm. they're, not gonna, they're obviously gonna get worse as they get older mm. but yeah okay quite an interesting story hmm. bit of a roller coaster i think that you've seen yeah now the thing is the reason i asked you to say your your story and your experiences about manners is because i truly believe that before we start looking in terms of other people in society we have it decaying in our own homes Mm. all right and this is what i want to bring it back to like where where is this lost and where is this taught 
fundamentally, it's taught from home. All right? Yeah. As parents, we need to be good role models towards our children. Teach them how important it is to be a valuable member of society. How you carry yourself, okay? How you are as a person, how you make other people feel. Mm. This is where, this is, now if that's taught from the, from the house, all right, then you will take that into your school. So let's say this is about 10 family, you know, I don't know, there's 100 people that do that. You will go to the same school. Yeah. That means you around that kind of environment. Mm. Then you go up and you go into society and jobs. You carry those values with you. Yeah. Slowly but surely, the whole society will then adapt to that kind of way of behaving. Yeah. All right. So the point I'm trying to make is that it's lost from the home. So if a child, if you see that child who's doing that at school, I then would then question the fact, how are they behaving at home? How is the role of the mother? How is the role of the father? The parents or the guardians? So let's say, just, just as a thing, let's say that at home there were good par- uh, there were, sorry, there were good kids, but when they went to school they will be troublemakers. Then what? Just like that, because I knew people like that. They would be really nice to their parents, and the parents would come, they would be so good. Then when the parents left, then they would just be, you know, they would just be chaos. Okay. I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, the only thing I would say about that is, as parents, you've got to make sure that you are very in touch with your children. Some yeah. kids have their parents around their little finger. Yeah. All right? And you see that. And sometimes the parents may even feel that. Mm. So you need to be honest with yourself to say, am I behaving like this? because i have a little soft spot for my child yeah all right so as so the first question the question is i think as a parent i'd have to ask myself that question like if i knew my daughter was very nice to me or um, sorry she was very good but i had no idea what she was like when she was out then i don't know i'd say that as a parent my job is to fundamentally understand yourself and then nurture you the way that and guide you the best way i possibly can there are going to be times where you're going to be doing things and i wouldn't have a clue yeah. All right. That's where you would like to say that the way that you have been brought up and the values that have been instilled inside of you would come to light. Mm-hmm. So now you, when you go out into the world and you're, and temptation is there and you can sit there and think, well, I can now do anything I want because my mother and my father aren't here. Mm. That's where you've been trained up towards to think that that's how you've been brought up to say, listen, when we're not here, you still carry yourself in a certain way when you're out in society. If you find that you're not doing that, then I would say that there's still something lacking at home. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that this is, you know, it's it's different from every household. Like I said, it's quite a complicated situation that you've given. Yeah. But I would say that I believe that it stems from the house. How you are as people, how you are within your unit, would uh, would kind of emulate how you are then a member of society and then how your society grows up and is either... Uh, nurturing or decaying Mm. so if we hold on to those things and we think that you know what no it's you know we need to be polite to one another and that's the and that is the given that's the standard then you're not going to have these problems yeah Yeah? but if you if i feel that now i can be a certain way and do whatever i want and get away with it like i can go around disrespecting the teacher and say things and not really have a consequence to it like what you're saying the teachers do not know how to deal with it now yeah not because I don't know if it's because they're not allowed to. Because I remember it's the, like it's the amount then, of power. Yeah, they don't have the power. They don't. They can only. Think, yeah, because back then they, I think they abused their power a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so now the kids are coming back. Like you know, and there's like, it's like for example back then I think you know how it was with the six and stuff. I'm not saying go back to that extreme, mm-hmm. but just to be just have some authority because now the kids are taking over and that's not great. Yeah. So and because but, th- but think about it this way. Look, as adults, yeah. if we have no authority. That means the kids can do whatever they want. So you flipped society upside down. Mm. So basically you're, what that kind of picture is, is that the kids will always be dictating what, what, what we're going to do. And then the parents are just left in the background or the adults are just left in the background. Mm. So it's, it's like ups, it's, a, it's, it's a society going upside down. What I understand and what I agree is etiquettes can yeah. change yeah. over time. Mm. things that were done back in the days we don't do now because we've moved on not you know we've moved in a in in a way that you know those things are no longer relevant or they don't apply to us but we have our way of doing that 
Yeah. I get that. Manners, I believe, are timeless. You carry yourself a certain way and that's passed on to generation to generation. All right? Yeah. I came across a, a, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was last week, the Ronaldo video. Mm. All right. So, so Pierce, all right. You know me. No I don't, I don't fan. Yeah, I, I'm not a football fan. I was, but I don't follow football now. Okay. Mm. So, yes, I, I know who this guy is. Yeah. All right. And I've seen him speak occasionally. But I was, I uh, think, I don't know what I was doing. And the TV was in the background. And he, Pierce Morgan, was interviewing him. And I was taken back just how s conscious he was of himself. All right. As a human yeah. being first. All right how well he was aware of himself and how he appreciated who he is, where he's come from. And when Pierce was talking about his kids, he was just like, I want to be the best dad. All right. So now he's yeah. like the role model is where I'm coming yeah, to. Yeah. All right. So he's now saying, I, you know, I want to be the role model and I, you know, for my, for my son. Okay. When you see people like that who have, money and power and wealth yet you can still see that human side yeah that's not got to the head you see he was Allah alam he was seemed across like a very humble guy all right yeah even to the point that he shed a few tears because something was said about his father yeah and yet if you watch that video where his father is being interviewed and he says that He's, 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 his father says something about his mother. I can't remember what it was. He just says that, oh, his mum's with him. That's all he needs. Yeah. yeah. And how, and then, and then you see his relationship with his mother. Yeah. You can see that his mother has taught him true values. All right. And although he's become the best footballer, some may doubt, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> going to get into that argument, but he is a very good footballer. Yeah. You can't knock him for how good of a human being he is. All right. Yeah. And it's like, well, from where he came from to where he is, he has a story to tell. It's not like he was born in wealth, mm. but he was also instilled certain values and morals. He also made a comment that he goes, I don't want my children to have it easy. Yeah. Okay. Now, again, he's saying that they are grown up in all of this. They think that this is normal. This is the standard, mm. but he's just like, I want to be able to still show them and teach them. And, and, and I think he said, I still want to give them a bit of a hard lesson to say, you know, this is your, you should be grateful, all right, for what you've got, right. and and it's always just like looking, looking at yourself and and understanding who you are as a person and what impact you have on other people, and I think so, like like what I was saying about role models, that's that is people need to say, well, you know, when you say people are behaving in a certain way, yeah. when you were giving the example of school, could it be they've chosen role models other than their parents, who now are who they feel kind of attracted to their character, their personality, say, we want to be like this. I want to be like this kind of guy, this kind of rapper, this kind of actor, whatever it is. They, what, they see them as their role model now, as, where it, it should have been their parent if they were there for them. So this could be a problem as well. Like, yeah. are we really engaged with our children? And do our children look at us like, wow, you know, we're, you know, you really inspire us. And therefore you have a bit of power in order to say, right, I now need to start making sure that I nurture you correctly so that, you know, you can carry these morals, um, you yeah. can carry these morals forward. And that's how it then goes from one place to another. Do you see? Yeah. It's like... There's nothing wrong with having other role models as well. No, absolutely. Look, look, the, the thing is having, this is why, look, as Muslims, we say role models should be like the Prophet Sallallahu the Sahabas, the companions, yeah, the Tabeens. We look at the early generation and say, this is how we should be. All yeah. right? But it's not to negate the fact that, listen, just dismiss your parents and look there. As human beings, listen, if I was a child hmm. and, I, and I'm growing up, okay, and I'm looking at my father and I'm thinking, my father's following the Quran and Sunnah and he's, he's emulating how the people were of the back in the days. And I look at him and I have, the, you know, there's a lot of love and affection, there's a lot of, I want to be like my dad kind of a thing yeah mm -hmm. then i grew up holding those the same values not really understanding because i'm a child but i'm doing it because i love my father yeah. yeah and then as i get older i then start to understand that this is the reasons why he behaved a certain way then then i then carry that on so that when i'm a father 
I then do the same thing with my child. So then my child looks at me and says that he's behaving in a certain way, not because I behave in a certain way because I want to, it's because of what was taught to me and that it complements my religion. And we'll come on to that, mm -hmm. right? Because obviously in our tradition, we're taught about how we should carry ourselves and about manners and etiquettes. It's a very big thing. Yeah. And a lot of people oversee it. That's the, that's the upsetting thing. But uh, just looking at, the, looking at what we saw, I think it is a bit of a complex issue. But the thing is to dissect the fact that etiquettes are something which are, which can be changed. Yeah. And it's perfectly normal. What, what is an etiquette in this country, as you said, could be totally different in a different country. Yeah. But manners are timeless. How you behave and how you make others feel. All right. Um, but like, like I was saying, with, with the child issue, I think it stems from the home. Right. The thing is, I believe if you, if you're a confident individual, all right. Mm -hmm. So if I, if you're, you know, when you're growing up and I, and I try my best to teach you about yourself and always telling you to better yourself and be the best version of yourself and, and put you in institutions or put you in places which will enhance your confidence. I believe that those little things help you define things like manners as well. Cause you would know that, yeah, I can say thank you, please. Or, you know, the, all of these other things were just put into place. The children now feel that some of them are insecure. Yeah, that's the, right. Yeah, that's really so they're not confident. So when you're insecure, you then have to carry yourself a certain way. You become a certain way, you know. You and so, for example, Probably let's take let's take you back to school, right? So you may find friends who are totally different yeah. at school, and then they go home and they become totally different. Yeah, that's an insecurity. They, you know, and again, it's those are the factors which can lead on to people being arrogant. Oh, I'm better than you why because da, 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 that's the insecurities that lead them to behave that way as as individuals as human beings as muslims if we are if we understand the line between confidence and arrogance and we we teach our children to say listen there's nothing wrong in being confident all right mm. being confident is knowing who you are knowing your strengths and weaknesses but also knowing how to uplift other people all right. Arrogance is about how to put people down, make yourself feel great. Yeah. And that's full of insecurities. So I think that's another part to the puzzle to say that if you can teach your children and put them in institution, whether you do it yourself, whether, um, you know, you engage them in sports or, or some activities which enhances in, uh, their experience of confidence, then I think that, yeah, um, and, and, and like I said, the confidence is a more inner thing. It's like knowing yourself and then you become people that can inspire other people. Then alongside with the upbringing, the nurturing of how to behave, you've now got a bit of a foundation of, of a good, um, human being who's going to, you know, think of others in society where, like I said, with the, the person who's arrogant, when they think about themselves, they're putting other people down. You see a lot of talk yeah, yeah. people are talk confident people don't talk much really you know they just do what needs to be done okay yeah, yeah. all right then because because they know themselves so well i don't need to argue and prove my point and make you feel down you don't know nothing da, 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 da. That's arrogance. that comes under arrogance a confident man will be like listen this needs to be done and you you be like they'll be like okay fine okay yeah yeah, yeah? yeah what you mean they don't they don't need the feel to I, I'm not here to convince you. All right. And and my my it's 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 almost like how Allah says, just deliver the message. Yeah. Not your job to sit down there and force it down their throat. Yeah. You speak, you pass your message in the best possible way you can, and you let them decide. It's like this saying I came across, it says confidence is a statement. Right. Arrogance is a scream. So that's quite interesting. Quite like that. <laughs> yeah. So it's a statement. You're com when you're confident, you, you know, whether it's in the way you behave, the way you speak, sometimes people think that as arrogance because they don't understand the difference that what is the difference. Mm. They think, oh, he thinks he's there or it's she thinks she's yeah. there because it's you're coming across confident. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. There's nothing wrong in feeling, feeling and being confident, but people don't understand the fact that when, well, like you know confidence is about knowing yourself but like i said 
if you start then thinking, oh, I'm it, it's all about me, Unless you then that becomes it. arrogant. So, for example, if I give you the same analogy with the Ronaldo, yeah, he was, you know, he was a confident man, no arrogance. Okay, mm-hmm. then you can have as an, an an individual like um, McGregor, right? All right, who in certain interviews is very cocky. Right. All right. I've seen interviews of him and he's confident and he's humble. <laughs> and then you see this, you see this um, act. Yeah. He, he becomes this actor and he's, in, he's just oozing with arrogance. Right. You know, I believe that's purely just for the sport, but you can see the arrogance. I don't care. Mm. I don't care. Yeah. Kind of a thing. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't see people like, um, look how Khabib. Mm. was you know he made a mistake i think that fight yeah right. which he uh which uh when he fought against mcgregor i think there was a uh, there was a little thing that happened afterwards okay. okay and then he got into a little fight with somebody else outside the ring right and he goes my father's gonna be upset with me now okay <laughs> that but this is what it is they were so conscious of the fact that listen their upbringing like my dad and he's a grown man <laughs> my dad is now gonna have it out <laughs> with me because I I acted wrongly out, you know, uh, in public. He knows he has a responsibility. He knows people are watching. He knows that I have to be a certain way because I could be inspiring other people. I'm a role model to other people. So you carry yourself in a way that you think is going to be inspiring. That's what we need. We need a lot more people who can inspire people um, to do to be the better better versions of themselves. Okay and. Like I was saying, in society, in society, I feel we put, you know, people put them people down. There's a lot of arrogance around, and we've just lost touch with a lot of things that mean the meaning, you know, the the actual mean the things that mean things. <laughs> we've kind of lost, all right. And like I said, I, you know, my my belief is it stems from the home. It's not as easy as that because each home is different. Right. Each person is different, but they're like. You can, you know, you have to do the best possible thing to say is it's important to instill good values in my child so that they can be good members of society. And teach others. Yeah. Now, that is if I look at it in the lens of a human being. Okay. What does our faith, what does our faith say about this? Uh, go on, think. Hmm? I don't know. Oh, wait, about manners. Yeah. Oh, like how the prophets or something. Yeah, so, so our tradition. So what's our tradition? So we've spoken about, we've spoken about manners in general, okay? Yeah. And saying that I started off by saying I think it's a forgotten sunnah. Yeah. All right? And we spoke about how we traditionally thought it was associated with the English of how they carry themselves, but it is a timeless thing. And nowadays people seem to be acting more immorally without manners and it seems to be cool to be doing that. All right, but yeah. then I said, as, as as human beings, if we're taught to be a certain way, then that will impact society. Now, as Muslims, yeah, it is so important. You know, manners comes under adab. Mm. All right, so this word which we started off with comportment, how you carry yourself, is so important in Islam that scholars say that it is the, or if not one of the most heaviest weightiest deeds on the scale okay all right so scholars have actually gone gone as far as saying that if you were to do what is asked of you as a muslim so we know our obligations as muslims what we're supposed to do the prayers the fasts yeah, yeah. then they say well a person whose character is beautified and is beautiful and is, you know they're well mannered that they you know they could be raised to the status of those who do the obligation because that's the standard but yeah. also become the people who pray all during the the uh, the night and fast during the day so you're rewarded as like you're in constant prayer yeah. and constant fast for the rest of your life kind of a thing nice. that it's so weight it's so weighty so we're sitting there arguing over ha- bro how long is your beard <laughs> you know and like and yet we're thinking that they are important i'm not saying they're not but in the scale of things when we look at you know it reminds me of when we were doing your maths exam yeah 
Do you remember what I said to you? Uh, you about a, to <laughs> <laughs> in in terms of how to structure um the the marks. No? Do you know about that? Right. What I mean is that when you're answering the questions, oh. which ones to work out for, make sure you do which one with what. Do you remember? No, wait, what? I thought you were talking about write your, uh, write your working out. No. Oh. Like my, my strategy to you was concentrate on getting those one and twos, the marks that give you one uh, and twos. All right? Okay. Put, get them under your belt. Don't go and start trying to get the fives and the sixes. Like, Don't go and think, right, I've got to spend most of my time answering these questions that are going to give me five and six marks. Get the ones and twos under your belt. Make sure you got them. All right? Because they can help you. They can help you. Now, it's similar to this where we're putting this. It's just like we're trying to move mountains and we've got to say we've got to do this and we've got to do that. Yet these little things, I mean, I say they're little because they should be taught and ingrained in you. That should be under your belt. And by having that under your belt, you could save yourself from a lot in the hereafter. Yeah? yeah. Now, like I said, think about it. You're praying, you're getting rewarded like you're um, fasting during the day and praying during the night. And it's the, if not, they, they say after Iman, it's the, the, the second weightiest or if not the weightiest deed on the scales. And we just overlook it. Yeah. So like... It, 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 it's things like that that make me think like hold on a second so hold on you're telling me this is quite a very this is a big thing and yet we kind of really overly overlook we don't look how we conduct ourselves in public how we are with our families how we with the children what kind of members of society are we how we're talking how we're treating people we overlook that yeah it's one of the most weightiest things in our religion and again if you look at the past in our tradition you can see it in the behavior of the people that how was your reputation give you an example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right we know that became a prophet at the age of 40 or was given prophet at the age of 40 right do you remember what his first statement was when he addressed the people was it over the mountain yeah yeah okay i don't remember exactly but i remember roughly okay would you okay, remember so something to do with so he was over the mountain and there were so many people around mm -hmm. and he said to everyone that if i told you mount, uh, an army was coming over the mountains would you believe me mm -hmm. and they said yes um because you know you're the truthful you mm -hmm. never tell lies mm -hmm. then he said something about um well then i've got like a message for it. i don't remember what okay right <laughs> my point is in what you've just explained oh, okay he f how he addressed the people was he used his reputation initially yeah. So he said, what would you say if I said this? Yeah. And they said, we believe you. So what's he, what's he explaining? He's explaining, he's, he's playing on his reputation. Yeah. He's using his reputation to say, you say this about me. So you know this about me. Yeah. So I'm a well, you know, and it's like that, that, that uh, reputation. So it's his reputation. Then he goes on to extend it by saying that this is, this is my message to you. Yeah. Do we know what happened after that? But the initial conversation was, what would you say if I said this? And in that is some gems to say that, what's our reputation? Mm. What kind of people are we? Are we those kind of people that when we speak, we speak the truth? When we give people time, we're there on time. When we give a promise, we honor our promise. When we, you know, when we speak to one another, we speak well to one another. Are we those people? Or, uh, you know, and that's, the, that's a question everyone needs to ask themselves. That's what I... That's, this is the thing. When we understand, and you know, people go to the study circles and they're opening these books of Sirah and they're going through the lives of the Prophet, you're thinking, we, we talk about emulating the Prophet. That's how we should be. Hmm. That's the best human being that ever walked this earth. Yeah, then how many are consciously behaving like that so that they can, you know, not only for themselves to attain such a weighty reward, but then teach that to the next generation who teach it to the next generation and teach it to the next generation. Yeah, chain of events. And because you're now thinking, well, this because what it what it does is it draws people near. Do you remember when I said initially that manners are attractive? Yeah. Okay. You, you I don't know if you came across this, but I think it's Indonesia. Okay. Right? They say that no scholar back in the days went to like mashallah, one of the most, if not the most populated Muslim country in the world mm. today. Indonesia, all right? No scholar went over there to go and speak to them and spread the deen. This was all done through merchants who would come over 
and trade with these people. Yeah. And obviously they married them and, and settled there. But what attracted was the message and, and the behavior of how they were, how they were with the business in terms of dealing with people, how they were as individuals dealing with people. Now that's mind blowing if you think about it, like a whole country, you know, the majority of country becomes Muslim through the akhlaq of how you behaved. This is the problem, right? Today, we have to ask ourselves a question. Where is our akhlaq? Where is our adab? Where are our manners? Where, where are they? Teach, you know, you talk, the kids are, are, are talking up to the teachers, teach, there's no, the, the whole nizam is all upside down. Nizam and it, meaning? Nizam means the whole um, structure, uh, the whole, yeah, I'd say structure. Um, um, it's all upside down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, but again, it's rooted back to how were you raised? Now, again, I'm not saying, listen, if you raise your child like an angel, they're going to grow up to be a child because that's a separate thing that you can do. Wait, what? That you can try to raise them as best as you possibly can. Right. And they can turn out the complete opposite. Okay. All right. That's also happens as well. That's God of Allah. And, and you know, that's uh, the, there's a separate thing I want to say about that. And inshallah, we'll do another podcast on that. That there's no one structure to say if you do this, then your children are going to be so pious that they're going to do this and the other. All I'm saying is that these are tools that what we have to do is try to be inspiring parents to our children so that when they look at us, they think, I want to be like them. And then when you tell your child that I'm like this because of a prophet or the Sahabis, and you introduce them to that with hikmah then I think you, you've got something. But we, we're so blasé and we say things as it is and we don't, we don't regard how we're making other people feel and yet we're thinking, as long as I'm praying and as long as I'm doing my actions that are applicable, you know, that are um, obligatory towards me, khalas, that's enough. But then when we look at something so simple to say, hold on a second, the Prophet said, would you not want something that gives you the, the reward of fasting all day, praying all night, the like reading all night, and uh, and I think the other thing was being close to me on the Day of Judgment as well. Cool, and, cool. and you're like, it's just the person who's good-mannered. And what did the Prophet wasallam say about himself? I have not been sent yet to perfect character. your character. It seems that where has our focus shifted? It's like we need more conversations. People need to be talking more about how we are as a people and how which then we can see as a society where we're going. You know, they say the most effective dawah is, is your manners. <laughs> I don't know about that. What, do, you think do you agree with that or not? I mean, yeah, I, prob I do agree with that. Because, you know, there's people who come across... Because, you know, you get those Muslims sometimes who are, like, spreading the dawah, but they're really, like, scary sometimes. They're very, like, pushy. Okay. And then they then the people who they're giving dawah to, they don't listen to them. They go more away from Islam. And then you get those people who are really nice and gentle. And you don't even have to... You don't. It's not about just becoming Muslim. Just you may learn a few manners from them. Or you like the company like that. Do you know what? You just said something which there's something I saw, yeah. all right, personally. I was at Speaker's Corner one day. Really? All right? I think, I, I don't know, we must have gone to Edgeware Road and had something to eat down there. Uh -huh. And then I think, I don't know if you, I think you may have been a little, I don't know if you were there, it's just me and Mama. Mm. And we were, th I said, well, let's go and just check out Speaker's Corner. So uh, we we went there and then you had the camps, you had, yeah. mashallah, the brothers sitting there giving dawah to the to, to, to people and you had... I remember this situation, all right, picture this. There's this brother. Mm. Um, he's not one of the brothers you see now who's just speaking. I don't know who he was. Yeah. And he's sitting there and he's literally standing and he's shouting at this woman, all right? Okay. She's listening to him and uh, she's trying to get some words and she's not getting the opportunity because he's like, his voice is this and that and the other, right? Yeah. And um, she starts, she, she turns and she walks away. And then he, I remember what he said. This was years ago. And he says, yeah. oh, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah. Yeah. She turned around and said, this is why I would never embrace your faith. Oh. How, what a slap to the face that was. He was trying to rummage knowledge down her. Mm. And through his behavior, 
she turned away. And when he made that comment, she said to him, this is why I would never embrace your faith. There is no... You, why were you trying to reinvent the wheel for? Yeah. You will attract people through your character. Through your manners. Yeah. Having good manners, personal huluk, I think you say in Arabic, yeah? Mm -hmm. This is the attraction on how you bring people to your message. This is how it was done by the Prophet. This is how it was done with the people before us. And yet we're falling so short that it's like we wouldn't probably have to talk half the amount that we do than if we just behave the way a Muslim is supposed to behave. Yeah. And like I said, when, you know, the more, you know, as you get older and you see these things, and when I, when I showed you the example of Indonesia, and I'm thinking, look, no scholar went there. It was all through the acceptance of how they behaved. When we look at the Prophet, there's a stories about how people embrace Islam purely because of his character. Yeah. All right. But, and I'm not saying, listen, when we're young, we have a bit of adrenaline, you know. <laughs> I've been there when I remember when Ahmed Didad and uh, Zakir Naik's video started coming up, and you're like, wow, yes. <laughs> All right. Now, I've always been fed logically. I love it. I love the information. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to them, thinking, wow, taking notes down. I bought my, I bought my, um, King James Version of the Bible. I'm sitting there, I'm highlighting <laughs> all of these verses because as you know, when we used to do Dawah, yeah. we'd sit and we'd, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd bring them out. But you, there's a time that, that you get to and you're thinking, what's been important to me no matter where I've been in my journey, it's always been the fact that how you come across and how you make other people feel. And sometimes we've become so opinionated as a people that the best thing you could do is just be quiet. Mm. You know, it's 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 in our tradition to, to to do that as well. But how many of us do that? We're so engrossed in, no, I need to ram this knowledge down your throat. I need to ram this opinion down your throat. Well, we're thinking the greatest people back in the days would just say, oh, this is what I've got to say. And if you're going to argue with me, then good luck, because I'm not going to argue with you. Mm. All right? So... Today's episode was pure, you know, was about minding your manners. And it's for everyone to ask that question to yourself to say, can I do a bit more? Can I do a bit more personally? Can I teach a bit more to my children, my grandchildren, whoever the people in your life, whoever they may be, to say, we need to be a bit more how the prophet was in that tradition and revive that forgotten sunnah of knowing how to conduct yourself in public and carry yourself. I get it. Etiquettes are going to change. Customs are going to change. No problem. Embrace those things, but do not let go of your manners. These are the, these are very important things that will define you as a na as a person, a society and a nation. And like I said, when I gave you the stats to say 90% of people think, you know, that we think that we're rude, where are we going? Where are we going? So, like I said, for me, this was, this was a very personal thing because I'm a great believer in, uh, in making sure that I f am first foremost get my akhlaq in order mm. um, and uh, just chisel at it daily, work on it daily. You know, you, you perfect it as best you possibly can so that when you're in a given situation, you know how to control and conduct yourself. Right? Yeah. You may think I'm a 1950s, 60s gentleman type thing, like, but it's it's bringing that back to saying, no, I, I'm confident in who I am, but I'm not going to take no rubbish, but I'm not going to be arrogant about it. Mm. So change your perspective without even raising a hand, but it's how you come across. And I think that needs to be learned, and a lot more people need to know about that. A lot of people need to teach their children about that. And get them more engaged, like I said, what the, the Danish people are doing, volunteering. How many of us do volunteering? Mm. You know, it's, this is, this is, these are things that we know that are going to help the next generation and, uh, and even ourselves to become a little more humble and understand and appreciate what, what you have and always give thanks to what you have. All right. And uh, bank as much as you possibly can in the bank of manners, you know, because that is, that <laughs> because that's what's going to help you. Yeah. Have an account. 
mm. called the Bank of Manners. Right. And drop a coin in there every day. Because that is a weighty thing, I'm telling you. You know? Mm. And like I said to you, in the strategy of your math, don't let go of the small things. Because those small things, because remember, your, your deeds will be weighed. That's why when people see mountains coming, oh my God, this guy is so amazing. He's got a mountain. Yeah. And it's put on the scale and it weighs no heavier than a feather because it's like, it's its weight. Yeah. You know? So don't just look at people doing amazing things. You, and that's for everyone to ask themselves. Have, you know, do these things because it will give you the, it will give, you know, you'll do well in this life and you'll do well in the hereafter. I think we'll be fair and we'll end it with a quiz, but this time you can quiz me. Yes. All right. The only thing is that when I was quizzing you earlier, yeah. I was going through a flow chart. So depending on how you answered, it was telling me where to go. Yeah. But what I think you've got is a series of questions that you're going to answer. Yeah. And I'll be as honest and truthful as I can. All right. You may have to halalify some of them. <laughs> okay. But I'll leave that to your judgment. Okay. Inshallah. Okay. So um, fire away. Okay. So the first question is, hello, welcome to the quiz. Shall we get started? So it says, uh, if you would say yes, please, um, I guess so. Or, oh my God, let's do this already. Yes, please. All right. Yeah, obviously you can do that <laughs> one. Okay. Um, so your coworker has food on his face. What should you do? Whisper it to him quietly. Let him know in a normal inside voice. Yell it out to him. Whisper it. Whisper it. Okay. So at dinner... Do you uh, do you wait until everyone is served before you tasting your food? So always, only if it's a formal dining occasion. Not really. I usually just dig in when my food appears. Ooh. Um, <laughs> formally, I think if I'm in a gathering, then I'll be I'll behave myself. Okay. Otherwise, I'll probably just jump into the food. No, no, no. Yeah. Um. So you are at a fancy dinner. Where should the fork be placed? To the left, to oh the right, God. on the plate itself. I haven't got a clue. I mean, Islam, we do on the right, don't we? Yeah, so let's go with that then. Okay, so you're picking up an acquaintance at their house. What do you do? Park, get out and ring the doorbell. Text them, I'm outside. Honk loudly until they open it this mum. <laughs> My mum would honk it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I would text. You would text. I okay. would text. So this is quite a long one. So you need to run into the store but there are no parking spaces available. Mm -hmm. You suddenly spot a handicapped parking space right next to the entrance. Oh. Do you take it? You're only going to be a few minutes. So sure, I'll be quick. Only if that were my last option. Never. I would prefer to wait for another space to open up. Definitely never. Okay. So do you curse words and profanity in public? No. Okay. You have been entering guests since... F wait. Oh, you've been entertaining guests since 5 p.m. And now it's almost 10 p.m. And it's getting late. You're exhausted and would like to get to bed. What do you do? Grin and bear it. I can't kick everyone out. You want to stretch a lot, hoping they'll get the idea. Ask everyone to leave politely. Ask everyone to leave in an annoyed voice. And you're saying it's a party? Yeah. So they're all friends? So you're, just, you're just entertaining people? Yeah. So no, I, I'll be like, guys, I'm tired now. It's... Okay. No, no, I, what, would I say, guys, I'm tired? It's just ask to leave it politely. Or would I leave for everyone to go themselves? Like, give the hint, um, I'm tired, you guys want to go? Like that? Or what would you do? I think I would. Go on. No, I, I would let them go when they want to go. Okay, but as in, you're in. <laughs> Is it not in there? No. <laughs> you have to tell them one way or another. Okay, so I'll tell them politely. Okay. I'm tired. Um, so you are invited to a <clears throat> gathering mm -hmm. at an acquaintance's house right. and you want and you really do not want to go. What's your excuse? So sorry, I'm going to my great aunt's funeral that day. Mm. <laughs> I'll say yes and then cancel at the last minute Ooh. due to illness. <laughs> um I'll apologize and let them know I would love to make it but I have other plans without yeah. saying what they are. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Okay. <laughs> Without saying what they are, maybe that will depend on the person. Okay, so you just farted in a business meeting. Uh, Excuse me, <laughs> I apologize. Oh, you know what? That's actually one of the things. Wait, oh, is it? Everyone <laughs> tends to look at you in surprise. What do you say next? So, oh my god, I think, um, I think I need to use the restroom, and then I'd get up and walk out. Excuse me, nothing at all. 
Bet it in the night, I always say. So should I say excuse me? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that I'd wouldn't say happen. No, I don't know if it wouldn't happen. I've tried to control myself, but <laughs> so um, when you leave the house, do you check your reflection in the mirror before leaving uh, to make sure everything looks in place? Of course, only if I'm meeting other people I know. No, never. I hardly even ever look at mirrors. No, I make sure I'm alright before I leave at home. So of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or mm, yeah, okay. Yeah. So do you ever respond to texts when people are talking to you? Never. Sometimes, but I always say. Do I respond to texts? Yeah. When someone's talking to you. When s- do I respond? Oh, okay. So yeah. like. Like you're oh, talking. Oh, got you, got you. All right. Yeah, so okay. never. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, but I always say, "Hang on a second. Yeah. Um, all the time. It's a great way to get out of boring conversation. No, sometimes, but I'll, I'll say, "Look." Yeah. I'm on it. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take? Do you think I'm saying the truth? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Because you could be like, "No, actually, you don't do that." <laughs> no. Okay. Fine. That's good. So, um, how long does it take um, you to respond to personal emails? So, it depends on who is emailing me. Mm-hmm. It can take a while, to be honest. It varies, but maybe two or three days on average. I always make sure to answer within one or two days. Yeah. Last one, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, are you typically a punctual person? Totally yes. sometimes I wasn't. <laughs> 100% before time, I'll be there. Okay. So, your friends and uh, your friends' parents invited you over for dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, would you take it? A bottle of wine, some roses, nothing. Why? Would I take a bottle of wine? No. Why would I take a bottle of wine? I don't know. Just a, okay, bottle of juice. Would I take a, a bottle? bottle? So basically, juice. I was saying, would you take a gift to the to to the house? Yeah, probably. Or yes. some roses. I'll take some. Oh, uh, a drink or roses depends yeah. who it is. If it's who was it? The just parents. Friends. Yeah. friends. Yeah, pr- your friends' parents. My friends' parents. Then I'd probably take. Juice, <laughs> 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 some coke. No. Um. So often, do you interrupt people? There are talking? the better drinks out there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so how often do you interrupt people talking? Often, never. It happens occasionally. Interrupt people talking. Mm. I would like to think it never happens, but occasionally, I guess I yeah, do. Yeah, does that really? <laughs> yeah. But I'm not. I I wouldn't just jump in and say no, no. Yeah. But yeah. I'll, 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 if I if I've got the urge and I need to say something, then yeah, I'll say yeah. it. So have you ever asked someone for a receipt for a gift they gave you no. so you could take it back and exchange it? Okay, of course not. How loud is your music if you are having a party? All volume up, a normal volume, and never play music. Normal. I play in sheets. <laughs> normal <laughs> volume. Okay. So, um, Basically, I'm, I, I'll be making sure that I'm not disrupting the, the neighbours. So yeah, okay. so normal volume, yeah. So, um, you're in a restaurant. Dude, how many questions we got? There's so many. There was 29. We've got eight more left. Eight more, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you're in a restaurant mm-hmm. and the soup has a hair in it. What do you do? I complain and ask for a discount. I would leave the place without paying. I will call the waitress and ask for another soup. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever forgotten to turn off your cell phone when at the movie theatre? Yes, many times. Once or twice. That has never happened to me. Uh, Sometimes I think it's happened. So, just say once or twice. Yeah. Um, if somebody serves you food you don't like, what do you do? Tell the truth, lie and say I'm allergic to whatever it is they're serving. Just eat it; it's not going to kill me. Yeah. Lawson. I guess if I'm around, if I, if I'm with friends, then I may say like, "Guys, man, what's this?" But <laughs> if I'm, if I'm in uh, more of a formal setting, then I'll just eat. Yeah, okay. Um, what's the best way to impress a manager after interviewing for a new position at the company? Write a nice handwritten thank you note and hand deliver it to the office a day after the interview. Stay silent and patient. It's always better not to bother the upper management after an interview. Send them a friend request on Facebook and LinkedIn. The first one said to send them a letter. Sorry? The, the letter, thank you letter. Okay. Um, do you sometimes forget to say please and thank you? Sometimes, never or hardly ever. I purposely do not um, say please or thank you. It makes you sound weak. No, sometimes. Yeah, most times. I think most times. But I am guilty of not saying it. Yeah, I could be better, yeah. So are you um, ever accused of talking too loudly? No. <laughs> um, a new family just moved in <laughs> next door. How do you give them a warm welcome to the neighbourhood? I don't. Introduce myself to them. It says that. There you I just do that then. Yay. Save you time. Um, so is it ever okay to put your elbows on during a meal? So, oh, this is etiquette so no. Yeah, so no, never. It's okay if it's fast food or a casual meal. It's always okay or no way. I guess I'm guilty of that. I'll do that. So which one? 
I think I would do it that old time. I'm, I'm, it's always okay. Yeah, I think I'm a bit laid okay. back with that. So, do you eat with your mouth closed? I would like to think so. Okay. Only when you're alone or all the time? Uh, I don't know. I don't check my mouth when I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> I was right all the time just for your sake. <laughs> okay. That was glitching. Hmm? Glitching. Oh, you have it. Good. You have excellent manners. Excellent manners. Yeah. Look. You did. Wow, my love. Wait, why are you so... Well, hold on, hold on, hold no. on. Why are you so impressed? Like, Wait. Yes, well, thank you very much. I would like to thank... No, no. Actually, I would like to thank my parents. Oh, no, no, no. Look. Uh, congratulations, you have excellent manners. Mm. You know what is rude, what is polite, and mm. how to navigate the social scene like a pro. Your parents must be proud. That's what I said. I said, well, I'd like to thank my parents. <laughs> thank you very much, Iman. That was quite interesting. Mm. It went on slightly longer than I thought, yeah, but um, totally to say excellent manners, I'm, wow, I'm really, really impressed. Right, so it. <laughs> okay, well, guys, um, remember. The first of November. Well, it's around the corner. Oh, yeah, it's actually. But more importantly, remember, manners maketh man. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. See you on the next one, Iman. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Salaam alaikum. <laughs>